So, let's go! Dat is een voetbalarm. Ja? Hallo en welkom to our library. In which I only own one shelf of books. The other 60 shelves are my husband's. But anyway, it looks quite fancy. So I thought, why not do my Q&A video in here for a change? I made a post on Instagram in which I asked you guys to ask me anything you'd like to know. So, behind the camera is my lovely assistant, my husband. Nee, ik <laughs> nee. vind je een lovely assistant. Niet. Nee. And because I intend to ramble on for way too long, my husband actually suggested to help me with this video. And he is behind the camera reading aloud the questions. Was je wel in beeld? He will make sure that I won't be talking way too long, so I'll get this video done by the end of the day. How did you start playing and why? I actually always wanted to play the violin. I saw people playing on the streets, on the TV, and I really wanted to do, to do that myself. And I actually didn't think I could do it. And when I was married for a few years, at the age of 26, I applied for lessons at the music school here and I got started. What do you think was the hardest part of learning the violin? Um, the, hard, the, the hardest part for me um, has actually always been intonation and relaxing my left hand. And those things have improved a lot over time. It means practice, but it's still a bit tricky at times. How do you cope with online lessons? Um, because the Netherlands is in a lockdown now, that means I have my violin lessons through Skype nowadays, every week for 30 minutes. And at first I thought that online lessons would be kind of a hassle and not very efficient, but actually it turned out to be, well, it works. It's actually quite doable. Um, it's not ideal, of course. I'd rather have real face-to-face -face lessons, but so far I can manage. How do you maintain motivation slash positivity? Um, staying motivated to play the violin can be a bit tricky sometimes because it's such a hard instrument to play. And you have no frets and the posture is so unnatural. Um, what I do is I set tiny goals for myself. And whenever I reach even the tiniest step forward, I, I actually celebrate that, you know. <laughs> in a way of being happy that I achieved just a tiny step forward. Do you feel you are improving constantly? Um, yes and no. Um, in my first year, I was progressing immensely fast because everything was new to me. So everything I learned felt like a big step forward. But now, four years in, I am still practicing those things, only I am polishing them and fine-tuning them. So. Yes, some things get easier because my technique gets better, but progress feels slower because I'm not doing that many new things. I'm working on things I already started. Have your goals with the violin changed? Actually, no. Ik zeg weer actually. Dat geeft niet. Okay. When I started to play the violin, I wanted to have fun with it, play with other people, and perform in a band. And I'm still doing all those things. I'm happy to play, I play with people, and I even join the band, or maybe even two. So I'm happy and I still do that. Will you ever buy a new violin? Um, not anytime soon, but eventually I might upgrade my acoustic violin. I bought this violin last year, and I think I can play on this one for at least the coming five to maybe ten years, but then I might upgrade it. And I also would like to get a Viper violin one day. Do you still have the same teacher? No, I don't. I had my first teacher for four years, but he quit his job to be a school teacher full time, so now I have a new teacher. My new teacher is a woman my age, and that's actually quite funny. Did you ever participate in a music competition? Um, no, I haven't, and I'm actually not intending to do so either. I mean, some people do that to get scholarships for studying, but I'm a grown-ass woman now, so why should I want that? 
And uh, to be honest, recitals and performing makes me nervous enough. So competitions, nah, don't think so. <laughs> Two. How do you work on basics? Well, it's very important to always keep practicing the basics. Although you don't always want to do that when you're a few years into playing, it still is very important. For example, I started to learn vibrato after one year of playing, but I'm still doing those basic exercises to get my vibrato more smooth and to get better at it. I work on the basics by doing things like skills and vibrato exercises during my warm-up when I play. How do you practice vibrato? Vibrato! <laughs> Sorry! Sorry! No! I know, I know. Okay. Again. Mm -hmm. Card again. About this? I don't know. What do you want? Okay, okay. Vibrato is something that many people want to go too fast with, myself included. Um, but in order to practice it effectively, you should practice it slowly first. Uh, when I started learning it, I had to make movements like this. And then gradually make them slower until it looked something like this. And I started doing it here, up to the body of the violin. So my hand would have a rest. And then I could go practice it here. And um, the thing with um, and the thing with vibrato is that when you don't practice it for a few months, it gets stiff again. So um, this year, my resolution is to practice vibrato almost every day and to do the movements again. How much less often do you practice? Um, not every day, in case you're wondering. No, um, I practice about four or five days a week and a practice session is usually between one and two hours. Two hours is usually the moment where I get tired of it as well as my husband behind the camera. Comment please. One minute is usually the time her husband gets tired of it. <laughs> yeah. How does your perfect practice routine look like? A perfect practice routine? A perfect practice routine is a routine where you are focused. Playing and being distracted really won't help. Um, I noticed that it helps to start with skills and then doing technical exercises and then to practice a piece or concerto. So warm up, technical stuff and then a piece. Is there a difference in practicing for a performance? Yes, there is. And when you're practicing to eventually perform that piece for an audience, it's very important that your timing is absolutely on point. Uh, usually when I perform, I do that with um, either another student at the music school, or I do that with my friend Irma, who is a piano player. And that means that we pay most attention to playing exactly on time and starting at the right time, so it will all sound like a nice name. Coherent. Coherent is the word I was looking for. That also means that whenever there is a note that should last four beats, they really should last four beats. Otherwise, we get confused and it doesn't sound coherent. In short, timing. What piece are you currently practicing? Currently, I'm practicing two pieces. One is the Xardas by Monty. And the other one is the uh, Double Violin Concerto by Bach. Are there specific pieces you play on your electric violin? Uh, on my electric violin, which I only use when I uh, practice or perform with the band, I um, actually play pop songs. Number three. The personal questions. Oh. <laughs> Blow me away! <laughs> What's your favorite book? My favorite book? Your favorite book. Well, what a coincidence! This is our bookcase. Ah, it's here. <laughs> the Hobbit. And also Harry Potter. But those are way up there and I can't reach it now. 
but my favorite book is The Hobbits. Which languages do you speak and which languages do you want to learn? I speak Dutch, obviously, and English. And also, I come from a town where everybody speaks a Dutch dialect. Not a language officially, but it still sounds weird enough to be a third language. <laughs> I speak a tiny bit of French and German, and when we went to Denmark two years ago, I learned a few basic words in Danish. But for the rest, um, English is quite enough, actually. How tall are you? I wrote my height down in foot. Feet? Foot? Feet. Metric rule. <laughs> Hashtag metric rule. Serieus, hè? Yeah. Het is een serieuze QA. <laughs> Heel serieus. How tall are you? I am 1 meter and 73 centimeters, which is 5 foot 8. I had to Google that. What do you like best about your home country? I live in the Netherlands. What I like best about it is the infrastructure and the fact that we're a very, very small country, so everything is nearby. That also means that a, even a one-hour trip seems like a journey to us. Yeah, everything feels far away because we're not used to it, right? Do you play music as a hobby or do you practice in order to one day make it your job? Well, up until now, it's just my hobby and I am making a little side hustle out of YouTube. I think making a living as a professional musician is really not uh, very doable because I've, I've started so late. But making a side hustle out of YouTube, that's very possible. Do your parents play any instruments? My mom? No. And my dad doesn't play an instrument either, although he really likes the accordion, but he thinks he can't learn to play it. So I might actually give him one when he's going to retire. How does the violin affect your mood? Do you like tormenting your husband with your playing? <laughs> Do you like tormenting your husband with your playing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Please look. <laughs> so, that's it. Thank you for watching my Q&A video. I hope you enjoyed it. We sure had fun making it and had a good laugh about it. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. That also means um, whenever that, the, and that also means that when, <laughs> Whenever is an odd word. Words are hard. Words are hard. Okay. Okay. So these were all my questions for the Q&A video and I really... Uh, my answers. Oh, Your yeah. questions, my answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Reveal yourself. Yeah. Ah. Weet je hoe fout dat klinkt in Engels? Wat? Reveal yourself is ontbloot jezelf. Echt? Ja. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> dat is mooi. Dat is alles. Oh. Kort genoeg.